Well, space might be the final frontier, but a long mission to Mars would also push the personal frontiers of astronauts. So, for the past year, a group of scientists have been cooped up together to simulate what life might be like on the Red Planet. They have been living in a dome perched on a Hawaiian mountain where the soil is said to resemble that of Mars. And for the past 12 months, they've been conducting research while managing their limited resources in, of course, a very confined space. But within the hour, these six scientists will finally be set free. All right, to discuss the importance of the Mars simulation, we're joined by the space journalist Sarah Crudas. Thanks for being with us Thank in the you. studio, Sarah. So they've been cooped up together for a year. Just explain what the conditions have been like for them. Well, we're trying to simulate similar conditions that you'd experience on a mission to Mars, because the problem is the longest anyone's ever spent in space is just over 400 days, and that was why a Russian cosmonaut, a return trip to Mars would take around 520 days. We've simulated this before in Russia, but this is a separate simulation we're seeing on Earth. So the six scientists uh, lived in almost like a double decker dome and um, they had their own sleeping pods they had places to conduct experiments but they were completely isolated and cut off so for example it will take 20 minutes for us to communicate between earth and mars because of the distance between the two planets so they had a delay in communications in terms of that they also had a lack of internet they had a lack of fresh produce because one of the big things that i don't know if you've seen the film the martian I have. where he tries to grow potatoes but actually farming in space is a very serious thing and food production in space so they're looking at that aspect of things, they had no fresh food, they had very little contact with the outside world, and also the psychological sides of things, because we don't always get on as people, and what they've seen before in similar studies to this Mars mission, similar isolation studies, is actually fractions in the group and people falling out, and, and what these types of studies will help. So the next one starts again in Hawaii in uh, January, is actually helping NASA and other scientists decide which types of personalities to select when we eventually get to that Mars mission. And I know it sounds like something out of science fiction, but we could have had the technology to go to Mars in the 80s or the 90s if we'd carried on with the same momentum after Apollo. The ambition is there, the goal is there, and going to Mars is hugely important for the exploration of our solar system. Why, though? Explain, we always go on about it. The mission to Mars, that's the next thing. Never mind landing on the moon, it's been done. Why are we so obsessed with Mars? Because Mars used to be much warmer and wetter. It's just outside the habitable, Earth, uh, habitable zone. So think of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Where Earth is, it's just right, not too cold, not too warm. Perfect conditions for life. Mars is a little bit out of that, but we think in the past, a long, long time ago, Conditions on Mars could have been very similar to Earth. At the moment, Mars has a very thin atmosphere. In the past, the atmosphere would have been thicker. We know there's evidence of liquid water on Mars, so there's a possibility there could have been microbial life or even other forms of life on Mars. There may also still be some form of microbial life on Mars, so that's, that's game-changing in terms of exploration. But also, say if there's nothing on Mars and it becomes less exciting than we realised, it's the first stepping stone in terms of exploring further into our solar system. You've got to remember we're this one tiny planet in this one galaxy, I mean, this one solar system in this one galaxy in this one corner of the universe. There's so much more out there. So Mars is significant for many, many reasons. And I think the first person on Mars, which NASA thinks will happen as soon as 2036, will just be a game changer in terms of exploration of our solar system and also humanity, being able to look back and see Earth as that tiny little speck in the night sky. And what sort of money is being pumped into all this research? Who's financing it? Who actually wants to go to Mars? Well, lots of people want to go to Mars. Um, NASA's the obvious one which springs to mind. NASA funded this work with the University of Hawaii. You've got the Russian Space Agency. You've got the European Space Agency. But actually, private money. So what we're seeing is a new space race, so to speak. So we had uh, Apollo, which can be thought of as the Columbus moment. We're now seeing uh, a new era in space exploration where private money is being ploughed in. So we're seeing companies very seriously looking at mining the moon, mining asteroids, which sounds like science fiction, but you've got water there, which is the key ingredient for rocket fuel. We've had, only this year, we saw BEAM, which was the first inflatable habitat, the first private habitat as well, on the International Space Station. So as throughout history, governments going first and then private companies afterwards, we're seeing exactly the same thing now. So a future exploration, a future mission to Mars will probably be an international collaboration between private money and then also uh, governments as well. And it sounds like science fiction, but within the next 20, 30 years, we will be seeing the first humans on Mars. It's very exciting. Sarah Crudders, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, space might be the final frontier, but a long mission to Mars has been pushing the personal frontiers of astronauts. For the past year, a group of scientists have been cooped up together in a simulation of life on the Red Planet. But now, right now, it's come to an end. In the past few minutes, indeed, pictures from the social media site Periscope have been coming in, showing them 
are leaving the dome where they've been living perched on a Hawaiian mountain where the soil is said to resemble Mars. And for the past 12 months, they've been conducting research while managing with their limited resources in that very confined space. Uh, let's discuss this as we see those pictures of the six uh, scientists who've been taking part. I'm joined by uh, space journalist Sarah Credis. And Sarah, it's fascinating seeing them coming out. It's the first time they felt the wind, the breeze on their faces in all this time but because the spacewalks that they did, so-called spacewalks, yeah. they were actually wearing a uh, full kit, weren't they? Yeah, inverted common spacewalks. So this uh, isn't the first thing of this time we've seen, but we, we saw a mission called Mars 500, which was a joint American, European and Soviet mission where people spent 520 days in isolation. But this is the, the first long one we've actually done in Hawaii. It's a collaboration with NASA and the University of Hawaii because to get to Mars, it takes a long time. It takes over 500 days for a round trip. And in terms of spaceflight, long duration spaceflight, the longest humans have ever spent in space is uh, not much over 400 days and you know simulating longer space missions is costly in space so this is a budget way not so much of seeing the effects of space travel on the body because you need to be away from earth but seeing about how a team could cope a team of six scientists a team of six individuals because when you go to mars assuming it is a return trip you're going to be cooped up with people uh, completely for six uh, you know six seven months for the trip there right. and the return and that, trip back that's so. what they were simulating here and it's, it's not only that there's personal relationships and, and how they fare in that way but also the lack of fresh food and and difficulties in communication back home as well well exactly to talk to mars it takes around 20 minutes with the current technology we've got so they had a delay in communication they had a lack of internet for example on the space station they have internet it's not very good you can expect worse internet during a trip to Mars, and they're also conducting experiments. But the, the key point for this is it helps scientists understand more about the type of people they can send on a mission to Mars, because we have astronauts for short-term missions, but you're going to need a different type of personality for that long-term mission. And it looks like something out of science fiction, talking about people giving this simulation of what it's like to be isolated on Mars. But we're really entering into a new era in terms of space exploration. I mean, we could have gone to Mars in the 70s, the late 70s, 80s, uh, perhaps even the 90s at the latest, if we kept the momentum with Apollo. We've got sidetrack in terms of human exploration. We've done some incredible things with robotics. We've had the space shuttle. We've built the International Space Station. But Mars is going to happen, and very likely within our lifetime. I mean, NASA has a target of 2036. Elon Musk... Really? Um, that soon? That soon, that soon. But you'll be... Think about it. In 1961, Kennedy said we'd land a man on yeah. the moon by the end of the decade. Man had only just gone to space and it happened. We, you cannot imagine how technology is going to progress right. so fast. Look at how the internet has changed the world in the last 20 years. So, so there's probably a kid at school now, right now, who's going to be on Mars in yeah, you know, it, 20 it, odd it years. It does time. sound like science fiction, but we are really progressing. And what we're seeing with space exploration as well is that Columbus uh, was, you know, Apollo was almost the Columbus moment. Now we're seeing the Mayflower moment in terms of private companies coming in and industry as well. So it's not just about space agencies such as NASA and the European Space Agency and the Russian Space Agency. It's also about private individuals, private money, who are getting a business case for space, because let's be honest, if you can make money out of it, there's going to be people working in the sector. And also the rise of countries such as China, which during the moon landings lived under the Mao regime, they're now looking at sending a human to the moon within the next decade or right. so. Right, and just coming back to, to these guys who've just been cooped up for the last year, uh, very briefly, it's very difficult for them, a lot of personal issues. One, I think one member's grandma died while they were there. It's just the sort of thing that they're going to have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a simulation. It isn't something you can opt in and out of. I mean, this is the longest um, one that NASA and the University in Hawaii have worked on. They worked on an eight-month one. They found there were fractions in the group. People didn't get on. This is now the longest one they're going to do. Next January, so January 2017, they're going to start another eight-month uh, mission within, within that isolation chamber. All right. Well, Sarah, great to uh, get your Thank expertise you. on this. Very interesting. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.